I came from the northeast of England, you know, um, and up there there wasn't much to do. My father was a miner, um, you know, and I was living in quarry houses. All I was up there was mining, shipbuilding, and that was it. But as a kid coming up, I heard an, an old album by The World of John Mill, John Blues Breakers. A friend of me loaned me that, that album. And I wasn't sure about music or anything off then. So something in there got me. Uh, it's a spirit of the music, you know, the blues. And that was the main thing. I mean, I wasn't playing harmonica. I wasn't playing any instrument or anything at all, then, you know, nothing. So I immersed myself in John's sort of music and uh, started looking at his credits. Bear in mind, this is cutting a long story short. Um, I bought a lot of albums of John's and that because I was, you know, curious about this music. And when I looked at John's credits, there was a lot of the players that I had never heard of, like Sonny Boy Williamson, John Lee Hooker, this and that and the other, you know. And let that and that was going on, I was starting to get a little bit anxious about what I wanted to do. And I wanted to um, really play my heart off from something and I was trying to find an instrument that would make it work you know I tried guitar I went to piano lessons I mean piano lessons was crazy I was only about 13 or 14 and this lady was behind me and all she wanted me to play was Bobby Shafto I had to go Bobby Shafto Bobby and that wasn't what I wanted I wanted the short route straight into the blues and so I just <laughs> I gave that up and something with John John Mill instruments he played piano himself he played guitar he played this he played that and he played the harmonica i'm not putting putting john down but it wasn't his greatest instrument you know but he got me on that so there again we're talking about a backtracked and um some of the players like sonny boy and that and there was something i didn't sort of connect with i mean i didn't have any music a background or anything. The only music background I had was my grandfather, and he was he was a bit of a lad. I mean, he was a coal cutter at the face in the mines, but he he was on the um, or he, he was in the merchant navy in the twenties. But he was a bit of a lad, and he played some harmonica. When I heard him play, it wasn't the old, um, you know, sort of diatonic style. I mean, he was just playing something like with one of these old harmonicas and he would play like sea chanties. And I heard him about five or six years old and he was going. <laughs> so I thought when John Mill was playing this blues harp, I thought he was using one of these. So that's what I was using. I was trying to get them blue notes, and as all you harmonica players there, I can see Ricky laughing there. You're not going to get a blue note out of hell in this thing, you know? But that was a sound. It was a great thing. I heard in my mother's house when he was playing that. So that might have put me on the journey to what I wanted to do, you know? And um, so, as we say, we went, I went further on. I didn't have any keys, and sometimes John or Jarvo would have the keys on the side of the credits. So I bought, well, when I first saw it, it was in a sounds magazine. It was um, John Mayall, uh, Bob Dylan, and Mick Jagger use Echo Supervampers. Now that, the Echo Supervamper is the equivalent to the marine band that we use today of the Blue Top. There you go, baby. I can see you there, Mr. Tony Stokes. Yeah, and I've got some. I was going to show you some of them. And, well, they, 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 were, the, they were the marine band. I mean, they were the 10 holes diatonic. They were called the Echo Super Vamper. Now, that is the sound. Vamping. The vamping. What my grand, what I've played there before, I mean, you would use the vamper like that.
you know, they, they were like early styles, you know, of playing. But um, I, I hadn't gone into that. I didn't know any keys. I didn't know any uh, terms of uh, straight hop or cross hop or tongue blocking. It wasn't wasn't mentioned then. I mean, I was up in Newcastle there in mind there was hardly any electricity up there anyway, you know what I mean? And uh, so I went on and on with that. And I played for a long time in the folk clubs just playing that straight style. And I even thought Sonny Terry, before I get into Terry, but th this, I, I thought Terry was playing straight. I thought all the harmonicas were playing straight. I thought, well, it's, they're playing in the key of A, the guitar is in the key of A, so they're playing an A harmonica, but they weren't. And there was, I went to a folk club in Washington, um, it was called the Lamp Glass Cellar. And there was two guys who were up there, it was just a young lad, they were called Praga and Rye. Steve Rye was a, um, was a harp player with the Groundhogs. And I, I was up before them playing, I was just a young lad, just a kid. And I'm playing, I said, this is Sonny Terry style, you know, going da 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 and I was playing straight. And he says, man, Paul, you're doing it all wrong. I said, what do you mean? He says, he plays cross. I said, what the hell is cross? What, what are you talking about? You know? He said, well, you, you know, your, your root note is the second note draw and all that. And, and as soon as he mentioned that, that was the only thing anybody taught me or told me about it. And uh, then I went, wow, this is it. No one, I couldn't get them sounds, you know. But I struggled them years to try and get it. But I got it. And then when he mentioned Terry, I mean, all this is cutting a long story short. I'm trying to put everything in in an hour. Um, I, I thought I loved Sonny Terry's sound, you know. It was so unique. It was himself, a very uh, personal sound. And he didn't play like anybody else, you know. All the other players... John, they all came from John Lee Williamson. John Lee Williamson, the first, first Sonny Boy. All the Chicago players, all them players played like that. Terry came from the East Coast of America, played on the in the pediment style, a ragtime sort of style, hillbilly music. And it, just to put a one in for you, and then I'll break all the things down that they got me. This was that sort of, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what I'm talking about here is with all your harmonica players. This is what I did. That was my turning point. I heard Sonny, and bearing in mind I came from the folk clubs of the Northeast. I didn't. I wasn't in any. I mean, there was there was nothing going on. There was no bad scene. There was nothing. There was the working men clubs that were playing. Show me the way to Amarillo. You know, and all that sort of stuff. Every night I've been hugging my pillow. And my father had said to me, you should have went that way, Paul. Better than playing the blues on the harmonica. But, but I stuck in the old folk clubs. And uh, that's where I got my craft. I was on my own. And I just had the old foot stamp and playing. So what I did, I modeled myself on Terry. And this is what I tell everybody today. Yeah. You have, for me, to get to the style you want. You model yourself on one of them great acoustic players. And I'm talking about three that I got off on were Sonny, Noah Lewis from Gus Cannon's Jug Stompers, and the great big Walter Horton for the big Chicago tone style, you know. But they were all tone players, and that's what I was after, was tone. And um, I, 
I found in a junk shop, and um, this was a few years after, you know, I was in the folk, doing the folk clubs, just opening up for different people. And some people were coming in, I would I actually played with, um, um, I was trying to think of his name now, yeah. I must have the old dementia coming in at the old age. Um, oh, good God. He was um, part of the British scene in the in the 60s. And maybe somebody can help me on that. It, big, big guy, big guy. Long John Baldry, that's the one. My wife's just shouting in the background, you know. And I got up and played with him a few on a few shows, you know. And some of the guys that were passing through the four clubs, you know, Wiz Jones and people like that, you know. Um, and that, that, that was my big thing to play you know but Terry was my thing so I, what I was doing was getting I didn't have any guitar player with me or anything I was just stamping and, and playing what I, what I could play you know but the, this, the album that I got and I found it in a junk shop I think it must have been about 1968 or 69 was Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry Sings on Folkways I don't know if anybody has got that or that, you, it's, you have to have that album. It's, it, it is the sound, it's, it's beautiful. And the songs he plays on there and the phrasing, the playing is just out of this world. I can push that up on there for you, but that's on a, it's on a, that's a CD. It's on four ways, I had the album. It's, it's so beautiful, the way it's done and the way they play and bounce off each other. And that harmonica style that Terry was playing, so, so just flowing and personal sound, you know? And that's what it is. It's getting your personal sound across. And I've always be believed that, you know? I mean, I'll move on to some other players and that, and we can play some some of the old Sonny stuff, the way he played it, and I'll try and break it down for you if that's what you want. Does anybody want to fire any uh, questions to me? at this moment or you want me to go on or anybody got anything to say there's no questions, questions at the all right then. okay and, uh, so, sorry sam i think there was someone trying to talk there all right no what okay. was the name of that album paul <coughs> sorry dear see the cd Oh, what sorry. was the name of that album? That's okay. The album, the, I, the I, album was um, Brownie McGee, Brownie McGee, and Sonny Terry sings on Folkways. That that's it there. If I can try, if you can see it there, Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry sings on folk on Folkways. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Smithsonian Folkways. That was what it was. Um, and I, I, I found that in a junk shop. And wow, it just changed my life. I I sat, I went in my room at my mother's house. I was just a kid coming up. And I locked myself in that room. Some people say they, you're exaggerating, Paul. And said, I locked myself in that room for, for 12 years. And got, came out and played like Sonny Terry. And to get to close to some master like that, that's pretty cool. But once you master one of them styles, you can relate to the other styles. Because they're all playing the same format. They're playing at 12 bar pattern. They're playing the cross harp or, or the straight or the uh, third position or whatever it is. But once you get one of them and you, you, you're pretty close to them, you can relate to the others like Big Walter. I'll just put something in about Terry. I mean, Terry would play something like he, his opening thing would be
mean, that would be Terry bringing in a, a song like that. Now, Big Walter, same format, same bringing it in from the five or whatever it is. He would be coming in like... I'm saying about that sort of style you know the, the different styles I can relate to them all it's just phrasing it put it in this way and what I was after with the harmonica was tone and that is the most essential thing I mean this technique of course you move with the technique but I can relate also to BB King sometimes BB was not so much And that's what what I was looking for, and that's what I say when I'm teaching or telling anybody. It's that big, you know, that's all. You know, just, and it, it pulls at the heartstrings, and it's pleasing to the ear. And that was the most thing, because the worst thing in harmonica, or any instrument, I think, is if they're all going... And they think, wow, he's a great player. Probably people think that's that's cool, but for me it was all. That's a bit of my own style, putting it in, and that's all I did. I got the three players, Noah Lewis, Sonny, Big Walter, threw them all in the pan, fried them up, and came out Paul Lang, you know? <laughs> a little bit like that. But I was also listening to guitar players, horn players, piano players, all sorts of different things, you know. And even even Stefan Grappelli, the hot club of France, you know, getting them sort of, you know, sort of, yeah, them sort of like violin sort of sounds. And that's what I was trying to create. And them early players, that's what they were listening to most of the time. They were listening to, uh, you know, Piano players, especially Terry, I mean, he would be listening to that area, the ragtime area, Scott Joplin, and all the players that he he was working with, believe it or not, I mean, <laughs> Terry was blind as a bat. I'm getting that way myself, I think. But um, the players that he was playing with were all blind as well. You know, blind Gary Davis, <laughs> blind boy Fuller, you know. All, all these players, you know, were, 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 were all handicapped. You know, but they had such a, a wealth of music. But that, that style from the East Coast for me was 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 very um, you know I had I was going for that sort of sound, not so much the uh, the Delta sound, you know, with the sounds of, of John Lee and uh, Sonny Boys. You know, I moved on to them later, but I could relate to them pretty cool. You know, anybody want to talk about anything? Any I was going to ask. Uh... Paul, what, what would be the uh, a good starting point for learning to play Sonny Terry rhythm uh, playing? I've always struggled with that that element. Well, it, it, it's just breaking it down. And, it, you know, Terry's main rhythm was that sort of... I mean, you had millions of rhythms. I mean, you'd put little things, little pieces in there, little bits, and that's what you were looking for. You think it's easy, and you're thinking that. But that, that little break down there, I'll break it down for you. you got, so I'm doing that. That's only just coming out the toilet, is it? <laughs> that's all right. 
So he would be doing so, you know, that, that's all right. So picking it down is the draw. So you've got a draw there, and then you go two draws, then two blows out. Back in again. And then it's sped up. And it's, it's putting that little bit of skip on it. <laughs> That's a bit of it. <laughs> so it slowed down, it's just. So you've got draw, blow. So it's blow, suck, suck, blow. So there's a little skip in there, can you hear it's got And all them little things that I got, I had to sit in my room and get them right. Because you think people come to me and they say, Ah, oh, yeah, I'll play Sonny in the go. It's not like that. That's that's that skip that's the key, isn't it? It's that, that no, little skip. And that's, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that, and work on that till you get it. You know, just just really keep keep with that for a till you, till you, it just comes natural. It's what Terry used to say, you can only play what you feel and feel what you play. That's what he told me. And when you're thinking, you're stinking. You know, because when you start thinking about it too much, you're going... Well, you're losing the feel of the song. You're losing the feel of everything because you're going, well, it's going like this, nothing is going like that, not goes like this. It's not that. It's the, you're just getting it, you know? And these other rhythms, you know, would be like, like I said, that, that, that one I've just given you there. And then he would put, like, the tongue, because Terry didn't do a lot of tongue blocking. I mean, it was all puckering, you know? The only the only tongue blocking Terry did, i.e., which would be like that 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 was the only tongue. Or if he was one, there's that skip behind it. You know, that was the tongue block that he did. But um, most of the time, Terry was. Was just puckering, you know. But he did on harmonica, talking harmonica blues. He would do something like the the, the tongue tongue block comes in there. But so you're on the third draw. You want your mama. You want your mama. I'll call again. And then he would go. Now what he's doing there, he's doing the third draw. And then he puts the tongue over the two holes there, uh, the two. You hear it? And then he comes back to the percussive style. And then what he does is what I call smacking the reeds. It's just gone, as it says on the box, up, 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 and you're drawing. Some of his rhythms, I mean, there's loads of them. He'll be going on forever. Yeah. 
Crow Jane, Crow Jane, why oh, hold your head so high? You're the light, baby, you're gonna lay down and... I feel like snapping my pistol in your face. Come on, baby, I'll be your rest on I'm gonna sing this verse, but I ain't gonna sing no more. My book called me on book and I'm both. <laughs> that's old, uh, you know, some old Terry songs. I mean, that's the millions that I'd go through, you know, if we had the time to do that. I mean, does anybody want to yes. talk to me about something? Yeah. Well, how do you get that uh, that's, that's old sound in your plane? That, 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 uh, that sharp staccato feel in your plane. How do you do that? Well, it, it's that comes. <laughs> Once again, listen to the players. I mean, Sonny Boy Williamson had got it, you know, that big from the throat when it's choking it up. You know, like Sonny Boy Williamson would have that big sort of, he played the higher keys or something. Like that. <laughs> and ah, uh, it's choking, you know, and that's uh, what. How do you get that sort of, you know, how do you get that? Uh, Really sharp. That's, it, yeah. That's, That's it, it there. Well, it's just, it's puckering. It's just, it's, it's doing what it says. It's there. It's not, it's not, it's not. It's smacking the reeds, what Terry called it. It's using these lips here. It's, it's, it's with that. It's not, it's not the chucka chucka. If you listen, if it's doing what it's what I'm doing there. Look out. Oh. And that's how, that's how you articulate it. That, yeah. that, 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 that's the way I can do it. And that's what Terry showed me. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I had to find it out myself, you know. But all them, all them little things, because you're only playing with. Got ten holes, and they were only fooling around with about two or three, three of the holes, three notes or whatever it was. You know, I mean, um, and it's just the one he did uh, called. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of it now. Make a little money. He would do he'd do his thing and just phrasing the harp, making it work this way. So we got. I got a woman, sweet love and kind of day. I got a woman, a sweet love and kind of day. Oh, every way. Yes, 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 in every way. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> But what I was trying to make there was when he was moving around with that thing and he was coming back to the second draw, which was like different tones and different little 
nice nuances on them, you know, little bits of things, just phrasing it and doing this. And that's what you did. You didn't try and move off somewhere else. It's like the BB King thing. They flowed on them. They kept back. So there's one on the E. One on just it's making it nice it's 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 making it feeling it and that's that's what it is and that that was my playing it was all all feeling not so much well technique there is there which i moved on later on and started again to the chicago players and uh, uh big walter and you know like uh, george harmonica smith starting to get into chromatic so but my my whole thing, which I like to try to tell everybody here, is model yourself on somebody. It doesn't have to be Terry, but one of them great players, like, you know, you're going to cross players over because that's the, the modern day way. I mean, the straight players, there's some fantastic. I mean, I, I listen to all of them guys, you know, like uh, Lee Cannon, Cooksey, Jed, Jed Devonport, all, all, all different players, you know. Um, but to me, you have to, you have to come from something that you're into really big time. Instead of moving and crossing over to somebody else, you know, when you haven't really got this guy, because you're just getting some a little bit of this guy, a little bit of that, and a little bit of the other. But if you get, say, if you went for Terry, after that, once you got more to his stuff, you would relate to Big Walter, you would relate to Sonny Boy, you'd relate to Little Walter. Because all oh, little Walter was just putting, you know, he he. Well, little Walter basically he came from John Lee Williams, and all them Chicago players came from John Lee, and that's that's the only thing that was different was, was the Terry sound, you know. Was um, that was he was coming from a different thing, you know, but um, he had his own thing going, and uh, he never changed it. Well, I mean, he he came into different different days. He worked himself up to playing a little bit different. Uh, most of the time, that was his own personal style. It was beautiful, you know. Um, I mean, I can go on with a bit more with Sonny. I can go all day with Sonny, you know. I can move. I can move on. Like, like I was just saying to you before. I mean, you got John Lee, um, John Lee Williamson. I mean, he would he would play something like. Uh, little school girl you know all that sort of stuff and terry is his version of that would be jet jet playing blues and it's the same it's exactly the same but they had their own styles then you know and they kept to their own styles and terry's would have been something like <laughs> Wanna give him all jet plans? Wanna give him all jet plans? Wanna ride all over? Wanna ride all over your town? If I spy that woman I'm loving, I'm gonna let my jet plan. I'm gonna let my jet plan down. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's just, they were all playing the same. But 
putting their own little bit on it, you know, all the little styles, all this and all that. And uh, quite fascinating, but I've, like I say, I studied Terry for a long time and uh, he still gets to me today. And uh, just moving on to the different players, like I say, a big shaky Horton, I mean, he, I mean, <laughs> Do you, all you guys, you can come, come and talk to me a little bit more if you want. Is there anything else you want to know about anything or this and that or the other, you know? Uh, we've got something in here. Someone says more sunny, but then we've got, let's have some Walter. So, <laughs> well, Walter? well that's cool. I mean, we can, we can all do... Terry, I can go to the gospel with Terry, we can do this, all the different songs he did. And uh, and Big Walter was, was the same, but I mean, Big Walter came from from Hill Street, really. Shaky Horton, he worked with all them sort of early players from the 20s and 30s. And he had that unique style, he, he had that big tone, but he played more of that, well, what we call tongue blocking today. I mean, when I was a kid coming up, my grandfather was vamping. And then we called it hordes, but he was vamping, you know, that's what. <laughs> but Shaggy Horton, he, he was he was in that sort of, he, he was playing that sort of vein, you know, playing the straight style, he played everything, Shaggy. I mean, Sonny was pretty, I wouldn't say, I'm not calling that limited. He, he played a little bit of straight in the early days, Sonny, but most of his stuff was the cross style, and that's what he did. That was cool. That was fantastic. That was him. But Shaky, he would he, he would he would get into the command. He would play this. He would play a bit of the the other. You know, with Shaky Horn. I mean, and he like I say, he would play that sort of um, you know, that big tongue blocking style with that sort of bobbing thing and uh, alternating between the two single notes, uh, tongue blocking this and that. You know, and his his trademark was always that sort of. <laughs> a full sound man I mean that was you know just a big sound on its own when he started putting all the shuffles behind him and all that sort of thing was pretty cool I mean Walter could could blow on anything you know I mean he would on his straight style he was just a monster you know I mean he would start out with something like this is all straight harp <laughs>
<laughs> like Cucaracha, but he played all them. You know, they were trying to cross over a little bit, playing popular tunes of the day. I mean, uh, you know, Terry did all that as well. Big Walter, you know, um, you know, they even went. Big Walter would go into something like by like Duke Ellington and start and play some of that sort of stuff, you know. Like, don't get around much. That's probably well fitting for today, because I'm not getting around much anymore with the way this lock lockdown is, you know. <laughs> See you there, David. You know, and he would play something like. what it is there are a couple of questions come in uh, here paul yeah and um, there's one from russ um paul is your tremolo controllable uh can you slow it down in say a slow blues song and is it the same speed in your singing voice <laughs> has it got a natural uh, rhythm without thinking about it i'm trying to work that one out my, my... What the, the sort of, what, or, or this, that, that sort of tone. Is that what he's talking about? If you want to unmute Russ. And it's Hi. just. Hi, Paul. Hi, yeah. Yeah, I just want to know, you're singing tremolo or you're singing vibrato or whatever. You want to call it it's, it's quite fast and it's, it sounds similar to your playing vibrato as well or your tremolo but you know i'm just wondering um if that's a natural rhythm that your body's making or is it controllable can you slow it down and make it deeper and harder like chicago players well well, well, you, well you can i mean like i was saying before i mean it all comes as one with me russ i mean um yeah, that it, the harp is me my vocal is made out as one, you know. Um, that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm playing. Um, and like, like I say, he, the phrasings is different from Terry. You know, he 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 just play that. Oh, Walter would just change it by that. And it, it, the same. It's the same. But if you start, like what I'm trying to tell you, all, all you guys, is get into the one of the styles. And once you get them, then you, you'll know what the other player's doing. You can go straight in and you'll go, well, I know what he's doing there. You'll, Jimmy Cotton will be the same. Uh, you know, Jimmy's coming from John Lee. They're all coming from that. And they're just putting their own little brand on it. And maybe that is what I'm doing there, Russ. I mean, um, I kind of explain what I'm, you know, what I'm saying. I'm just feeling what I'm, like Terry says, you just feel what you play and play what you feel. You know, and uh, I'll... It was a song that Terry did, and I, I, I told the story the other night on this live show, where Terry spoke to me about, and I don't know if you've seen any stuff, of, much stuff of Terry, but in the 40s, Terry got a job um, on Finian's Rainbow, which was a fantastic thing for Sonny to get. They got, uh, it was a Broadway show, broad, and it was a Broadway hit. 
brought Sonny Terry in to play. And all I wanted Sonny to do was do all this hooping and hollering and stuff. And um, Sonny just, he, and the boss guy said to Terry, he says, you know what it is, Sonny? He says, every night, You've got to play. You do, you're doing two shows. You're doing an afternoon show, your matinee, and you're doing an evening show. And he says, I want you to play the, that, that same song the same way every night. It's got to be the same way every night, you know? And so Terry's gone, Well, man, I can't do that. He says, I can just play the way I feel, you know? He says, All I'm doing is doing a few hooping and hollerings and doing this and that. And he says, It's not going to be the same way every night. And he says, but you've got to play it the same way every night, Sonny. You've got to play it the same way every night. And Sonny says, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. He says, I've just got to play it the way I feel it, you know. And then he went off, slept it off, and he come back the next day, and he said to the boss man, he says, how much are you paying me for this, man? And he up and told him, and he said, that was the price. And he goes, wow, I can play it the same way every night. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bit of a joke, that funny thing. you know. But um, that was... That was pretty cool when he told me that, you know. And that, 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 that's all he was doing, hooting the blues, you know. And it was all fitted into that uh, Broadway show, and it was a hit. And uh, he made it good on that, you know. Um, but Hi, Paul. Paul, can I ask you a question on um, um, tongue blocking versus puckering? Would you say you're a sort of 50 50 player as regards tongue blocking and puckering? Well, um, it's hard to say. I mean, it goes in with a song. I mean, like I did Walter Horton there, Shaky Horton, and it's alternating between the two. So you got like a, a single note, a puckering there, and then you got... So you, you could probably say 50-50, but I mean, I'm not counting. I, I don't know. I mean, um, that, you know, you're, you're putting a little bit... And the way you feel it on the night... You might start and hit more puckering than than hitting on the, the tongue blocking, you know. The, the reason I ask, Paul, it's just that there's you're hearing more and more from top players that are sort of um, tongue blocking, and they're, yeah. they're tending to go they're going more back to uh, pucker playing, you know, mixing the puckering in. Well, I'm just playing, like I say, what I feel. I mean, from the early players, and just um, fitting it in the best way I can in the song. I mean. <laughs> That show I did the other night was just solo, um, acoustic playing, foot stamping, the way I did in the four I mean, I've got, you know, I've got the, I work with the band, I work with um, different bands around the world. As a duo, I do this, I do the other. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's the way I feel it. But I suppose you're right, uh, Sean, there. I, I, I'll probably do 50-50, you know, if, if you're talking about counting it, you know. Uh, that's what I'm saying. In, in your opinion, it's would you recommend to learn learn both rather than sticking with one? Well, of course, learn yeah. learn both. But what I, what I, I got back to what I was saying before when you were talking about, um, you know, getting one style, trying, I mean, you're never going to master a master. You can never say that, you know. I mean, I'm, I can get pretty close to them. Um, and that's their style, and I pay homage to them. I've tried to get as close as I can to those guys. I mean, I can play them, but they would never play note for note. They didn't play like that. They just played it like they felt. And um, and I play the same way. I just feel it on the night. I mean, I have, I have a, rock, a repertoire of songs. I have the way I might play this song, uh, but it, it's I'm improvising as well. I, I improvised because I've got to feel the audience as well. And when the audience is there um, and they're with me, I'll get excited because sometimes some people might just stick to 20, 24 bars on the harp or 36 or whatever it is. But if I've got the crowd going with me, I'll, I'll go into something. But but I don't want to overkill it or overjoy it, you know. It has to go work like that, you know. Um, but um, getting back to what you said, I think... You know, tone blocking, it's, it's a personal thing. It's what you, I mean, like I say, Terry, Terry is puckering most of the time. That was his style, you know. And then when he went to the top, the high E was, that, that's when he hit that, that tone blocking. Then he came down, he ran down, and there was that all puckering. So he was blowing out on that high uh, tongue block. Yeah. 
Old guy boys across that field. Great big snake bit him on a hill. He turned around to do his best. Fell right back in a hornet's nest. Up he jumped and away he ran. Couldn't catch a fool with an aeroplane. Old guy boy don't have no shoes. And got some running blues. That um, most of that stuff and that fast vibrato thing that Terry does, that's all puckering. It's not, it's not uh, tongue blocking or anything. The only thing he was, like I say, was he was tongue blocking. That was, and then even that's that's all that's all puckering. It's, there's no, there's no chords, no tongue blocking or anything there. You know, he, and that's what that's the way he played. You know. Um, you know, but you can, you know, you can vary it, which I do. I vary the style. I mean, I, that's what we're all searching for. I mean, uh, I've spoken to Ricky, Ricky Cole loads of times, and we're all searching the whole for the Holy Grail. You know, you're you're wanting to play your own style, but you have to get somebody before you to get to your style that you want to do. You know. And like I say, I immersed myself in Terry and probably Walter. And I mean, I, I haven't even went through to uh, Noah Lewis or some of the other straight players, some of the players, you know. I mean, um, Rice Miller as well, you know. I mean, what a killer player. I mean, I went through a period of that. But my main, my main stay, my main stock was Terry. And that's where it came from, you know. There's quite a few questions coming in now, uh, Paul. <laughs> Good uh, going back to this is 2:42 p.m. So that's almost 15 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> how do you do the trills? How do you do those trills? What do you mean the, the, the side to side? The sort of um, I don't know. It was it was it was Graham. Who, who's asking for that? Graham, Graham Newman. Newman. Yeah, I was asking for that. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't that that sort of uh, tongue waggling thing. It sounded like you were rolling your R as you were blowing out. And well, it, it's something I've I've heard John Lee doing as well. And it, it sounds like you're rolling your R's. Well, well that, that, that's a different, a few different ways of doing it. I mean, there was a hedge. You're talking about this one. I, I take it, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, not really. Um. You played it about 10 minutes ago. I can't remember when it was. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. That's yeah. just, they're all, just all tricks. I mean, it's as simple it? as what it is. Yeah, you, well, you, you could do it yourself. All you're doing is you're blowing out. Are you rolling your R's? Yeah. My R's, not my R's. My R's. <laughs> the R's. <laughs> <laughs> But that, I mean, the, the early players used it, you know, I mean, it was like... <laughs> Go on, blow it out, blow it out. You do it, do it, Graham. That's it, that's it, that's it. I need to work on it, but yeah, I think yeah, I but that's it's as simple as that. Yeah, okay. You see, I, I didn't have anybody to tell me all these things. All I had when I was a kid coming up in my 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 bedroom at my mother's when I was staying up in the Colliery House was an old dance set record player, and that's all I put on was the old records that I had. I mean, if you played them now, you wouldn't be able to hear them. They were all scratched to hell, and that's all I had to try and get 
try and find out them styles because I mean men as I'm sure Ricky and all you guys and it, you didn't have technology then <laughs> I mean you had electricity well I was looking to get electricity where I came from I tell you in the northeast of England it was more gas gas lit uh, lamps and that was it you know but um, you know now, you know, now I couldn't have done that I couldn't have rolled my eyes about a year ago uh, but, yeah. but I started learning a song uh, thanks to Ricky Cool. Ricky Cool has got a YouTube song uh, by Papa Lightfoot. Me oh, and great. Me. Yeah. And that, that kind of got me into a bit of tongue blocking. And then all yeah. of a sudden I was able to roll my eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, technology so has gone. Cool. Great, great harp player as well, man. Killer. But, um, I mean, that's it. I mean, it's technology now. You can, you can, you can see these people doing it. You can see you can see them on YouTube. You can see them on that. And bearing in mind, I'm gone further back than me and Ricky and everybody here. You would be talking about like Terry, who was on a medicine show in the 20s, 30s, or 40s, and that's the only way he would. Well, he couldn't see, but he would he would hear somebody playing like E4 Daily on some of his travels, and that's the only way they would get to see or hear these players. It's the same like Robert Johnson and all them early players. The only the only time you could see them or hear them was on the street. I mean, we're fortunate now these days can uh, see people on YouTube or on on this on this sort of thing as well. You know, you're getting first hand to, to the sound. You know, but for me, when you're playing this instrument, and I, I keep on <laughs> I keep on harping back to it, but <laughs> um, it's it's the music. It's not not just the instrument. It's having the feel. It's having the spirit, and that that's what it's all about. Because if you haven't got it, if it's not in your heart and soul, it's not going to come out. You know, you can. I've, you know, I, I've just felt it. I, I have to have that spirit. I have to have that feeling. It's going to put across. And my thing is, I've got it. I've got to get to the audience. I've got to get to the people. I'm not pleasing myself. Well, I've got to please myself first before I please the audience. But the first thing, the main thing is to get across to them people. And that's, that's what they're coming to see. And feeling it. That is making people feel their notes. Every note counts. Making every note hit every part and make it hit that soul. You know, that, that's what I do. You know? um, okay, have you got time for a couple more questions, Paul? I'm, I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm here all day. I've got nothing else to do. My wife will give me some work to do. I'm, sh I'm sure I'll probably be decorating after this or something. <laughs> that's rock and roll for you. Yeah, um, that's how I'm a rock and roll, man. Uh, one is, how do you blend the whoops into the rhythm, like, sort of, in a fox chase? Sorry? It's, uh, I didn't catch that. Sorry, from Ross. <clears throat> How do you blend the whoops into the rhythm, sort of in a fox chase? So I guess it's, oh. it's how you're fitting them into the... Um, well, you, it's got to hit the rhythm. I mean, that was, it was a hard thing for me to get. You know, you, you, it's all that breathing technique, which that's, that, that was the thing I was going to mention about Terry's style of playing, his breathing technique. You know, he could come up, come up for air, you know, you would think, God, where did he air from, you know? But then he's still having, when he hit the hoops, he was feeling them and he had that skip before he went to the next note, you know, sort of like, so I'd be hitting that. And the hoop had to have a little bit of rhythm on it. I mean, I'm, sometimes I play that, that one on Eli, sometimes I heard Perry did that one. Oh, 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 oh,
to get doing it you know it takes a long time to get that style i mean it doesn't just come overnight you know <laughs> i mean them hoops the men the hoops are going to be sweet as well as the note that he's playing to make it come in you know if you, if you hit them hooks wrong it, it, it'll not it'll not work but that that's a practicing thing for you guys you know sorry, and that that's just go uh, sorry Sorry, sorry, Paul. I just said, I noticed you call them hoops rather than whoops. Um, well, there's hoops. I mean, Kerry call them hoops or hoops or whatever he call them. Shouts or screams, shout in the blues. Sometimes Terry would say, I'm going to shout the blues. And then he would shout it or he'd say, I'm going to hoot the blues. And I did one, I covered a one, uh, recorded a few of Sonny stuff, dedicated to him called Hooten and the Tootin. You know, and it was just, he just, he just made things up, you know. He just made them up as he went along. Most of them hard players did. They had a format, but it was all people felt. I mean, um, I, I was trying to put a few more things in. I mean, it's uh, now I could go on for a bit, three or four days, you know, and just finish off. <laughs> there's, there's a bit, bit of chromatic as well, you know, that um, there's little Walter I could go into, I could go on. I mean, well, I think we're mainly talking about Terry today and the big, big Walter, I think. But, um, you know, I, I got into George Harmonica Smith quite a bit because, to me, he was the best of the... Well, he was from the West Coast. He was the best of the um, chromatic players, I thought. And I was just going to put something in for you with that. I mean, I don't know if it's relevant to, to what you guys want, um, but it, it just... With the amp, if you can hear it, you know. So George, George would be playing. I mean, when Bill Walter played something like, I would say, I'm, a, I'm a still heard there. It says my internet connection is uh, it's okay. You can hear me. Cool. You know they they play that Muddy Waters hit. I am ready. Now, George would use the whole format. Of the chromatic, he'd put the tongue over the four holes. Like. That's all a big harmonica sound from the from the amp. Yeah. Well, I was just moving on a bit. Was, I could have went on, like I said, for a long time, you know, to make it all come into that style. Come to the Chicago blues or whatever it is, but uh, I think is there any more questions you would like me to, to answer for you guys and no, before I go out? There was a question about chromatic, and you've just answered that. Um, and I think it was yeah. Just, oh, this one here from Joe. When playing your basement amp, what level would you set the bass to? <laughs> what level? Do I set it at? Yeah, 
I, I don't know if you've got that number. Well, it, it was just, I mean, it's not, I'm not using a basement there, it's just a small um, little Deville amp or something like that. But a basement, if I'm playing on stage with the band, I'm usually setting up about volumes on three, um, treble on uh, two or three or whatever it is, bass on seven, pedal on about four, and then a bit of presence, and that's it. And I might use a delay pedal, I might not. But, um, you know, that's, that's with an older static mic. And this is an old, older static that I've had for a, a, lot, of, a lot of years. And it's just that, that big sort of, you know, just uh, there again. Here I go. It's got to be in the chops. And when you've got that, it'll sound like... Did you say the bass to be set at four? Um, no, the bass would be set on about six or seven oh, on the basement. On the basement. Yeah, on the basement. Okay, thanks, Paul. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you, boss. Just having a look to see if there's anything. There's lots of thank yous um, saying how much they've enjoyed the session. Um, oh, Sam sprang. He disappeared for a bit, didn't you? He says, uh, apologies if I missed it. Paul, did you ever get the chance to meet slash play with Sonny? I think you've already uh, answered that question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I spent a bit of time with Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, I think if there's no more questions, no, I, I, then I, I, I think we can let you go, actually. Any other questions, anybody? Oh, are you sure? Are you sure? I mean, I'm going to get some work to do here in the house at R.A.M. Oh, we'll pay for him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, actually, I've, I've just... Uh, recognize, do you recognise that album? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got I've got 78s by Sonny. It's fantastic, that. I mean, great. This dates this about 1965, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tony. Fantastic. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, he... he um, he paved the way for me, definitely, Sonny. I mean, that, that's it, you know. But, uh, you know, the big electric sound came in, so I had to move, a, move with the groove, so they say. It's like technology today, you know. So, so there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a one I got off Sonny, which is his little bit of riff, but I'll just finish off on this one. I wrote the song. I'm not going to put um, I'm not gonna put all the lyrics in. It'll be appropriate for what we've got this afternoon thank you thank all you guys for coming in and girls all them nice girls that have come in thank you very much this old virus is making me sad and blue. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I'm a lockdown here, I'm a lockdown there. Oh Lord, help me out of here somewhere. It's all over. We gotta change our ways. We gotta move to the future, not the same always. Give a little here, give a little there. Respect our friends. Our friends are there. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant. I've, I've, just, I've just found something actually. I remember that we, um, Dad gave me a couple of years ago, and it's something from May 1964. Um, it's called a blues and gospel. Um, oh, it's, it's my background. Blues and gospel caravan. Yeah, I see it. Um, yeah. And look who's on the next page. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Yeah, well, they, they were they were all on them. Sam, they were all in them packages, you know, in the sixties, yeah. late fifties, Liban stroller. They, all, they 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 brought a lot of people in, you know. I mean, there was um, you know, there was Sam Hopkins, there was Big Joe Williams, Sonny and Brownie. Everybody, they brought everybody across into the into the European scene, Scandinavia, and the UK, and that's where the blues happened in the UK, basically. That's where the Stones, they were all going to see these shows, Eric Clapton, everybody, all them guys, you know? And that's what they saw at first time. So they tried to emulate that sound. I never thought they quite got it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that was the British boom after that, you know? When the Stones, the Beatles and everybody, that's where, that's what, that, them, them shows, that's what it was. That's what they saw. Fantastic. Okie dokie, so should, should we leave it there then, folks? Um, there were a couple of other questions. Oh, there's a quick one here. Are, are you on my blues harp uh, boogie CD? You sure make loving hard? Um, Paul Lamb and the Blues Burglars, or is that someone else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's me. That's okay. me. That's me. Not an imposter. I'm, I'm like dog. I'm like dog poo. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Even on the bottom of your shoe. Be <laughs> careful, we're recording this. I got it. I'll listen to it. Oh, Pauline, what is, have you got something to say, Pauline? No, I, I, I say this is the... Uh, this is the oh, that's the one. That's the one. one. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's so the burglars. I haven't played it for a while, so I'll have to listen to it very carefully, that track. It'll not sound... Uh, that was more of an amplified electric sound, you know, so it'll not be the acoustic, you know, but... Yeah. And I had hair then. <laughs> oh, right, there's a, a bit of a... One last question. <laughs> they keep on coming. Keep on? Yeah, it's all right. I'm all right. Um, why did Sonny and Brownie fall out? Oh, it's a, it's a long story. Right. I, I, I'll cut... Wait till next time. I, can I know it. I, <laughs> I know, I know. I, I can quickly say it. They had been working with small... And they got the chance on A and M Records. I remember because I was, I was, it was like in the seventies. And they got a, they got up with A and M Records. There was all sorts of superstars on it, and they got an advance of money uh, to split down the middle between him and between Sonny and Brownie. And they were they could have put the money and invested and went on the road with it. And Brownie, want, being the younger man, he wanted to do it. And he said, "Let's put the money in, Sonny." And he says, "Why?" He says, I've been doing all right all these years, just me and you or on my own. He says, I'm keeping my share. And then Brownie said, excuse my friends, French. That was it. They fell out, fell out over that and it was money. So well, it's, it's I was with them when they were arguing. Always yeah. nice to finish on a, on a positive note, isn't it? <laughs> just, just to come in on that uh, sort of last thing, uh, <clears throat> Donkey's years ago, in the 70s, I was a young cameraman at the BBC, and the first time I ever saw a diatonic harmonica, because I'd only ever, I wasn't interested in music, and I'd only ever seen a thing with a button on the end, with Larry yeah. Adler holding it, yeah. um, was that Sonny and Brownie came to do... Uh, 
an old grey whistle test, which in the early days was just a tiny little studio which had the weather map in as well. And they just plugged up and we did it live. And just remark how generous he was. We broke for lunch. Uh -huh. um, they didn't speak to each other all day. Browning no. went, went off to have lunch bought for him in the, um, in the canteen. And it yeah. was just me as the cameraman and him sitting there. And I wasn't interested in harmonica, but I did say about, oh, that's tiny little harmonicas. And yeah. he generously opened his bag, showed me his harmonicas, played me a little bit and explained the difference between the two. And I thought, yeah, yeah. well, uh, that's, yeah. So my first introduction to harmonicas was actually through him, which is brilliant. Through, through Sonny, fantastic. Yeah. But I saw, I saw that show on, on Paris when they did that and they, they were promoting, actually they were promoting the a and Records, um, that album. It had John Mayall on, it had Arlo Guthrie on, it had everybody on. And when, like I say, when Sonny and then when Brownie fell out over the end of it for them, because I, I went to Cambridge Folk Festival with them, and Sonny would be sitting with his harmonica, he had a, he had a, like a jacket on with all the harmonicas in, and Brownie would start in the key, key of E, so Sonny would pick his harp up. As soon as Sonny picked the harp up, he'd change the key, Brownie would change the key. Then he had to search around for another key. As soon as Sonny found the key, he slipped back, back to the old key again. So they were, it was sad. It was really sad, you know, to see them like that. Because, I mean, um, they, were, they were a fantastic duo together. I mean, they wrote great songs, fabulous. They, they, I mean, you know, they even Bob Dylan and all, they all came from that. Bob Dylan, I mean, we're working with Buddy Guthrie, Buddy Ledbetter, you know, just... They were fantastic. They just, I mean, Terry was just, I mean, a killer. Great. Okay, yeah, well, really fantastic. One last question. Uh, so he's asked this twice. <laughs> he's asked this twice. Um, <laughs> it should be quite, it, it shouldn't be a lot. What colour scheme? What colour scheme would Alex should do in the house? <laughs> That's a nice one. It's, c c um, <laughs> can I ask Paul if you have, have your song yep. recorded somewhere? I think, you know, the song you've played. Have I had? Do you have that? Have I? Sorry. She says, "Have you had that song uh, recorded? The the one that you uh, performed? The one was it? Well, lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, just, uh, but no, not not um, not on an album or anything. I did it the other night live at a concert. Um, I mean, there's a lot of verses in there. I mean, um, I just. I just put two verses in there, but uh, most of this is what you heard today. Um, I mean, I'll record it on some time. Oh, it's on YouTube. You'll see it on YouTube, you know. Oh, cool. Thank the full. You. Okay, Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> take, take it all the way to Edmonton. 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 Yeah, yeah. Alberta. <laughs> Alberta. There was a woman, Jakey Horton, recorded. Jakey's Edmonton Blues, and I heard that in 1972. And he played that on chromatic, yeah. Shaky's Edmonton Blue, that was a killer. Yeah, fantastic. Great.